Just one angel could kill 185,000 people. Now, imagine 12 legions of angels. Let's say one legion consists of 6,000 angels. According to the non-canonical Book of Enoch, the Watcher angels were sent to Earth to watch over humanity. The Bible records that the number of angels is vast, even in the thousands and mentioned as the heavenly army. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels, to the assembly, Hebrews 12:20 to net. The term Yahweh Sevo, Lord of Hosts, is used in the Bible, signifying the Lord of the heavenly armies. The expression appears nearly 300 times in the Old Testament, especially in Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, and Malachi, denoting power and strength in a military or apocalyptic context. It is interesting to note that this expression first appears in 1 Samuel 1-3 in connection with the holy place in Shiloh. In Matthew 26-53, more than 12 legions of angels are mentioned. Or do you think that I cannot call on my father, and that he would send me more than 12 legions of angels right now? Matthew 26-53 net. The Greek word legion or legion comes from the Latin, referring to a group of soldiers with a varying number. In the time of Emperor Augustus, one legion consisted of 6,826 individuals, including 6,100 infantry and 726 cavalry. In 2 Kings 1935, one angel alone slew 185,000 Assyrians. Just one angel could kill 185,000 people. Now, imagine 12 legions of angels. Let's say one legion consists of 6,000 angels. That would be 12 by 6,000 by 185,000 equals 13,320,000. Zero people potentially killed if 12 legions of angels were summoned by Jesus Christ. The current world population is not even close to that number, with a total of around 8 billion people. Job 25 to 3 mentions an innumerable number of angels and Revelation 5.11 describes their multitude as myriads upon myriads. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels round the throne and of the living creatures, and of the presbyters, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, Revelation 5.11. Angels each have specific tasks in serving God both in ministering to the throne of God in heaven and to humanity on earth. 1. Heavenly Service In heaven, angels serve in ceremonies of worship and priesthood. 2. Earthly Service Generally, angels are associated with earthly elements such as wind, fire, and storms. The nation of Israel has a special connection with angels as guardians and protectors. Angels specifically serve the church in meeting its needs. Angels guide the people, rejoice at repentance, strengthen believers, defend, protect, and accompany God's people. Angels observe when believers fight against the power of sin, and they also guard the graves of believers. Just as they guarded the tomb of Jesus, Matthew 28-2, and Michael guarded the tomb of Moses, Jude 9, 3. Watcher Angels I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and, behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. Daniel 4.13 Daniel 4.13-23 describes a watcher, IR in singular, a holy one descending from heaven in a vision of King Nebuchadnezzar. Note that not all translations use the term Watcher Angels. ESV, CEV, and KJV translate I are in singular in Daniel for 13 as a watcher, while NASB adds an angelic watcher. And IV simply calls it a messenger, and Net translates Nebuchadnezzar seeing a sentinel. These watcher angels are spiritual beings, heavenly creatures, 
or holy ones descending from heaven with the authority to speak and convey messages from God. The Hebrew word translated as watcher, I-R, in Daniel 4 comes from the root verb, er, meaning to rise or to be awake, and thus can mean those who are awake and consequently can signify watchers, guardians, or sentinels. The Bible Encyclopedia describes watcher angels as servants of God, with certain shared authority to convey messages and decrees from God. They appear to form a heavenly council that listens to God's word, and then acts as divine messengers to deliver these orders and revelations to humans in the world, since God's purpose is to display his wisdom to rulers and authorities in heavenly realms through the church. The concept of vigilant or attentive watcher angels aligns biblically. The Bible also affirms the presence of angels guarding and protecting humans, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Gregory, the watchers. Gregory Greek, egregoroi, plural. Singular form, egregoros is a term given in the non-canonical pseudepigraphal book of Enoch to the fallen watcher angels. The term Gregory Greek, egregoroi is not found in the Hebrew scriptures or the Greek New Testament. The English term Gregory is a transliteration of the Greek word for the watcher observer. Used in the book of Enoch, the Septuagint uses the word Iodoro, I are the sentinel. According to the non-canonical book of Enoch, the watcher angels were sent to earth to watch over humanity. They developed an unnatural lust for the beautiful women on earth leading to a large group of rebellious watcher angels, the Gregori, seducing Earth's women and impregnating them with hybrid giant offspring that viciously attacked the Earth, threatening humanity. Similar folklore stories were prevalent in Hellenistic traditions, not Hebrew literature. Non-canonical literature elaborates on the watcher angels, According to the Book of Enoch, watcher angels can be fallen angels or holy angels. These watcher angels pay special attention to the worldly affairs of humanity watching over them, and sometimes even intervening or controlling situations involving humans. Part of Enoch's mission is to announce God's judgment on the fallen watcher angels who supposedly dwell in the fifth heaven where their fall occurred. Substantial debates also revolve around the nature of the sons of God who became husbands of humans or fathers of the Nephilim. Are they the fallen watcher angels or the Gregory? Does the book of Jude and the Bible provide clues? And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Jude 1 to 6. For now, Christians basing their interpretation on the pseudepigraphal book of Enoch can only speculate in their interpretation. The Bible does not provide certainty on this, so anyone relying on the book of Enoch must contend with uncertainty. We should exercise extra caution in giving serious weight to ideas found in sources outside the Bible and Hellenistic myths.